Hey folks, thanks for tuning in here. It is application season. Today we're gonna to talk about Arizona. One of my favorite states to hunt. I always tell people that if you have a limited budget, the two states that should be on your list if you're an elk hunter, that you should be building points in, Arizona and Wyoming. But since this video is about Arizona, your deadline this year right here, it says February 9th, 2021, 11.59 p.m. Arizona time. If you haven't done so already, go and verify the information in your new portal account. They upgraded their system. They sent us all an email December 8th, 9th, or 10th saying, here's your new temporary username. Here's your new temporary password. Click on this link. Go use those two items to verify your account. And here's what I'm afraid is going to happen. A lot of people, that email went in their spam folder or their junk pile, or they just deleted it and said, oh, another piece of mail I don't need to read. And they're going to go to the Arizona system on February 8th or 9th and try to log in, and their old password and their old username is not going to work. So don't be one of those people. That last day is just chaos. You see servers crash. Hotlines for, you know, customer service are, have five hour wait times and just not good. So I'm going to preface the Arizona uh, system or, or video on the current state of affairs in Arizona. And by that, I mean a drought. Now, when I get done talking about what the drought situation is, some of you may say, oh, I'm not going to apply this year. Some of you may say, well, this is my year to maybe creep in with a lower level of points. But whatever you do, don't fail to buy your non-resident license and at least build a point. Because Arizona is unique from other states in that there are two ways you can gain an extra bonus point. That is the Hunter Ed course. You go to Arizona, you take the non-resident Hunter Ed course, and that bonus point stays with you for your entire life. You can never lose it. The second way that you can get a permanent bonus, or not permanent, you can keep it permanent, is they have what's called the loyalty point. For any species where you apply five years in a row, after that fifth year, they give you what's called a loyalty point. So using my example, I drew Arizona elk in 2017, shot a bull, had a great hunt. But most people would say, well, your points went got reset to zero after 2017. So I would have went into the 2018 draw with zero points. Nope. I had my loyalty point and I had my hunter ed point. So I went into the 2018 draw with two points. I didn't draw, so I go into the 2019 draw with three points. I didn't draw that year, so I go into the 2020 draw with four points. I didn't draw that year. So now in 2021, even though it's only been three years without a tag, I go into the draw with five points. My three bonus points, my loyalty point, and my hunter head point. Whatever you do, even in a year if you decide, oh, the drought's bad and I'm not gonna apply, at least buy a point because that keeps your loyalty point intact. If you really wanna get messed up, think about this. All right, I've got seven points. One of them's my loyalty point. I miss a year, so instead of having eight points, I lose my loyalty point, and I didn't draw or didn't accumulate a point that year, so instead of having eight, I go back to six because I lost my loyalty point. Don't let that happen. Arizona has a bonus point system that's a bit of a hybrid system, and they have two parts to their draw, and that's why it becomes a hybrid. So a few years back, quite a few years back, Arizona said, you know, We've got so many people at the really high point level. Let's do a first part of our draw where 20% of the tags are going to go to the highest point holders. The person with the highest points for that hunt code, for that 20% of tags that have been allocated over there, that's how the tags get rewarded. We all go into that draw, but only the top point holders really draw. So, 20% of the tags are gone in the first pass, or the first phase of the draw. Now, all of us who didn't draw, we go over to the second part, and this is where the remaining 80% of the tags get allocated based on a true bonus point system. So we all have a chance to draw in Arizona. 
yeah, if we're at a low point level and we apply for a really, really hard tag, our odds might be really, really low. But we still have a chance. When you're thinking about that, it plays into how you use your points, what kind of strategy you employ. If you're one of those people at mid to high point levels, are you just banking on drawing in this first draw and you shoot for the fence, shoot for the moon, swing for the fences every time? Or if you're like me and I've got five points, I know that I'm not probably gonna draw over here. I'm hoping that as I build a few more points, one of these late rifle elk hunts, maybe, you know, all of a sudden I'm at 30% chance or 40% chance with my five points in this second part of the draw. That's what I'm hoping for. Now, each of you are going to do that differently based on what your expectations are. There's two things you need to think about. One is the 10% non-resident limit or cap, and then the fact that you get two choices. They look at your first two choices in Arizona. So looking at just the 10% cap, every hunt code, with the exception of the cow elk and some of the limited opportunity hunts that are any elk, those are capped at 10% to non-residents. And no more than 5% or half of that non-resident quota can go in the first phase of the draw, leaving the second phase to have the other 5% or the other half. And in some cases, maybe only 2% of the tags went to non-residents in the first part of the draw. That leaves up to 8% in the second part of the draw. But the two combined will never be more than 10%. So, if you're looking at hunt codes, <clears throat> here's an example. An early rifle elk hunt has 30 tags. And you and your buddy have 20 points. And you say, let's apply for that. Well, guess what? There's only going to be, at the most, three non-resident tags. And say by some magic luck, you and your buddy get drawn but two of those three non-resident tags have already been taken by people with lower random numbers than you. So there's one tag left when they get to your name. Well, there's two in your party. You, you guys are gone. You're, you're not in it. So if you're a really high point holder, party applications sometimes can hurt you if you're applying for units that are super, super high demand. But that that's, applies to every hunt code. There's this 10% up to. We're not guaranteed 10% as non-residents, we get up to 10%. And when we reach that threshold by any hunt code, all the non-resident applications, gone, gone, gone. So you get two choices before they go to the next person. And that's what makes Arizona kind of cool and requires some strategy and some thinking. So you, you go over here in this first part of the draw, and if you're a really high point holder, you might say, well, maybe this is a year where I have enough points for this super tough hunt. But if I don't, I'd still be happy with this hunt that a little less demand. So you think about how you do your two choices. Now, if you're like me, and I know I'm not gonna draw in the first pool because I just don't have enough points. I'm over here with five, well, there's a chance that in the second part, I could just luck out, you know, gambler's luck, I got awarded a really, really low random number. So my first choice is probably gonna be some crazy application that I know I'm never gonna draw, unless I get really lucky. My second choice, I come back to reality. I say, all right, what is a tag where, according to the Go Hunt draw odds, Maybe I have 30 or 40% chance in this second part at my point level. So put some strategy into that. And then don't make the mistake of applying for a third, fourth, or fifth choice. Those third, fourth, and fifth choices burn your points. You might be able to get a cow tag. Well, in Arizona, it's burning your points. And every year we hear about somebody who party apped with a lower point holder and they swung for the fences and they put a third choice cow tag down. Whew, there goes all those points that highest point holder in the pool had. They thought, oh, we're just going there and we're gonna have a good time. Well, you're gonna go there and have a good time, but you're gonna lose your points. So, uh, 
Arizona also has this thing called point guard. For $5, it's like an insurance policy. So you buy it at the time of your application. You can do it for one or all species that you're applying for. And when you do, it gives you the option you can do this one time. Let's say it's a drought year and you say, boy, this is a really bad year to have burned all these points. You call Arizona Game and Fish, you exercise your point guard option, and for that $5 you paid, you get to turn your tag back in and have your points restored. That's a pretty darn good idea. I, if I was you, I'd probably pitch in that extra five bucks on point guard. So let's talk about 2021 and what the drought situation is. I was down there in December hunting quail and uh, rifle coos deer. It was super, super dry. Dry as I've ever seen Arizona. And I've been hunting it since I went to college there in 1984 and 85. I went back again this month for archery javelina and archery coos, and it's even drier. Now, fortunately, I looked at the forecast this morning, they're supposed to start getting some moisture. But even with that, it is going to be, uh, unless they just get a ridiculous amount of winter moisture, 2021 is shaping up to be a really bad drought year in Arizona, even by Arizona standards. I mean, I, I'm out here on the Go Hunt uh, Insider page, and I'm looking at the current drought status of Arizona, and probably 90% of the, the state is considered extreme drought, stage three. And when I look at all of the elk habitat that goes across the Mogollon Rim and that country, it's all considered stage four highest level of drought. What does that mean if you got a lot of points? Well, maybe you don't want to tag in Arizona this year. I, I can't believe I'd ever say that. But if you're a super high point holder, maybe you want to wait till this drought cycle breaks. I think, and I could be wrong, that a lot of the super high point holders, especially the folks who archery hunt, are just gonna buy a point. And like I said, make sure you still buy your non-refundable license and make sure you still buy a point because you don't wanna lose that loyalty point. So what does that mean for people who are maybe in that next year? Maybe this is your, your year that you sneak in there. And you just know that if the drought continues, that affects body quality, which affects antler size. Uh, and it, it could make for a harder hunt. The other thing it does, and this is a two-edged, double-edged sword, it's easier to find elk because you go to the remaining water sources and that's where the elk are concentrated. But guess what? Every other tag holder is thinking the same thing. And since there's, you know, maybe 80% of the water sources are dried up and only 20% remain, it's going to be pretty crowded near those water sources. Now, maybe Arizona gets a ton of really great moisture. It's not unheard of for Arizona in January, late January, February, March to get their winter rains. And everything greens up in Arizona really quick. If I was a high point holder, I'd still apply and I'd buy the point guard. And I'd, you know, I'd watch the weather. And if things really went bad and I stayed in the drought cycle and I did cash in my points for a tag, I'd turn it back in and take advantage of my $5 that I bought insurance called Point Guard. Here's another thing in Arizona. If you have young hunters in your house and you are not buying them points in Arizona, you should be. Non-resident youth, it's a $5 license. So you and I are paying, a, I think, $160 for a non-refundable non-resident license. For a youth, it's five bucks. And then it's only, I think it's only a $5 point fee for each point that they buy. So my son Matthew is the example of this. He's 30 years old. I was buying some of those really cheap points when he was a kid. He's going to have some really great hunts ahead of him. So folks, know that the elk and antelope deadline in Arizona is February 9th. This is just like your stock portfolio. You want to get the greatest returns. None of us have unlimited money. So I have to make a decision every year of which states give me the best value. And that's why I'm a big fan of Arizona, is the amount of value I get of all the states that require you to buy a non-refundable, non-resident license. I get more value out of my Arizona investment than I do any of those other states. If you really want the details, 
sign up for the insider they've got the strategy article they got a strategy video this year plus they have the best draw odds in each of these states you got 3d maps i mean you got all kinds of stuff so go there and when you do sign up use promo code randy r-a-n-d-y and you'll get a 50 dollars gift card to spend in their gear shop so don't miss the deadline go to arizona and hunt this year have a great season Stay healthy and be happy. Thanks for watching.